How's it going ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Donahue here again. This time we're gonna take a look at some practice problems for colligative properties and even some for colloids. So let's take a look. Number one, the solutions are created using the following solutes. Given the same molal concentrations, which solute will have the highest vapor pressure? So we know that the vapor pressure uh, for our mixture is gonna equal the mole fraction of it times what it should have been when it was pure. So if we, uh, increase the solute our mole fraction for our solvent is going to decrease which means our partial pressure would decrease so if we're looking for the highest vapor pressure we want the least solute right and we got to look at how many ions does it break up into because this uh, mole fraction is for particles if I take a look at NaCl, it's going to break up into two particles, Na plus and Cl minus. CaClO42 is going to break up into three particles. We're going to get a plus two. We're going to get two of the ClO4 minuses. AlClO43 is going to give us four particles. KClO4 is going to give us two particles. And sucrose is a non-electrolyte. We're only going to get one. So the one with the highest vapor pressure is going to be sucrose because it gives the least number of particles in solution. Choose correct option in the parentheses. Um, as the concentration of a solute in a solution increases, the freezing point of the solution does what? And the vapor pressure of the solution does what? So if we increase the particles, the freezing point is gonna go down, right? It's gonna be harder to freeze stuff if we have things dissolved in it. And the vapor pressure is going to also decrease. If we have stuff dissolved in it, less stuff is gonna to wanna to vaporize. It's gonna hang out with the solute instead of going to the gas phase, which is gonna decrease the vapor pressure. Which of the following will have the highest freezing point? So we know that the change in a freezing point um, is gonna be equal to I Kf times M. Number of particles it breaks up into times some constant times its molality uh, and the freezing point always goes down. So if I want the highest freezing point, we want the least concentration of particles in our solution. So pure H2O, oh man, that's the front runner right there. But let's take a look. COI2, uh, 0 0.03 molal. Well, COI2 is gonna break up into three particles. So I'd end up with a particle concentration of 0 0.09 molal. NAI is gonna break up into two. So we would end up with 0 0.06 molal. FeI3 would break up into four, so we'd end up with a 0.12 molal concentration of particles, and aqueous glucose is a covalent compound, non-electrolyte, we'd still just have 0 0.05 molal. But pure water means, hey, we got zero particles in there, it's gonna have the highest freezing point. Number four, which of the following solutions will have the highest boiling point? So we know as we increase the particles, the uh, boiling point is going to increase. So if we want the highest boiling point, we want the solution with the most stuff in it, most particles. Pure H2O, well, definitely not. Uh, so let's see, I kind of worked through this on the other slide. Um, this is gonna break up into three particles, so we'd end up with 0 0.09 molal of parts. Uh, this is gonna break up into two, so we'd have 0 0.06 molal. FeI3 is gonna break up into four particles, so we'd have 0.12 molal, and glucose, non electrolyte, is gonna stay as one particle. So the one with the highest boiling point is gonna be the one with the most stuff, aqueous FeI3, because we'd have a equivalent of 0.12 molal concentration of particles. Five, what is the freezing point of a solution created by dissolving 11.3 grams of calcium nitrate Given the formula weight in 115 grams of water, the molal freezing point depression for constant is this. So we know that, hey, the change in the freezing point is going to equal to I times that constant times the molality. So first, molality is going to be moles of solute over kilograms of solvent. And they tell me that we got 11.3 grams of calcium nitrate. So I'm going to have to go, hey, moles of this stuff is the grams divided by the GFM. So maybe, you know what, let's combine them all. My molality is gonna be grams over GFM, cause that's gonna give me moles, divided by the kilograms of solvent, 
And if that's true, then I could substitute that whole thing in to there. So I end up with I times K times grams over GFM divided by kilograms of solvent. Now, if I'm looking at calcium nitrate, it's going to have an I of three. I'm going to get one Ca plus two and two nitrate ions. So I get three times the molal, um, I'm sorry, the freezing point constant of 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal times how many grams did I use? 11.3 grams divided by the GFM of calcium nitrate, which I did math off screen, is like 164 grams per mole divided by kilograms of solvent. Well, it was 115 grams, so that's 0.115 kilograms of solvent. And when I plug and chug and do that math, I end up with a 3.34. Now, uh, my freezing point depression. That's not what they're asking. They wanna know what is the actual freezing point. So I know that it's going down 3.3 degrees, 3.34 uh, degrees Celsius, and if it's water, well, hey, I know the freezing point of water was zero degrees, so zero minus 3.34 is gonna give me a freezing point of negative 3.34 degrees Celsius. Final answer for that one. Six, what is the molar mass of a solute if a solution containing 10 grams of it and 90 grams of water has a freezing point of negative 3.33 degrees Celsius given the Kf of 1.86 degrees Celsius per mole out for water. All right, so let's let's start. We know that, hey, the freezing point went down 3.3 degrees. I know that it's gonna equal I times um, Kf times the molality is gonna give me 3.3. I'm trying to get the gram formula mass or the molar mass. Uh, we're gonna assume that I equals one. All right, they usually will say like a non-electrolyte. Uh, so we're gonna assume that I equals one. My molality is gonna equal my moles of my solute divided by kilograms of my solvent. And I know that moles is equal to grams over the GFM. So if I plug this in for moles here and then plug this in to this equation here, I'm gonna get my freezing point depression is gonna to have to equal I times KF times uh, grams over GFM over kilograms of solvent. So now if I'm trying to get the GFM by itself, I'm gonna to wanna to multiply both sides by GFM and divide each side by delta T. So I'm gonna end up with the gram formula mass is gonna to equal to I times KF times grams over kilograms of solvent divided by the freezing point depression. So now I can plug and chug. I equals one. Man, I can't talk and write apparently. So I equals one times the KF of 1.86 degrees Celsius per molal times, how many grams did I use? 10.0 grams divided by the kilograms of solvent, which is 0 0.090 grams, right? This is 90 grams of water converted to kilograms is 0 0.09 divided by the freezing point depression of 3.33 degrees Celsius. <clears throat> when I plug and chug that, I finally get an answer. I get 62.1 grams per mole as my final answer for that. There you go. So now we know the gram formula mass for that solute. Seven, what is the molecular weight of an unknown solute, not electrolyte, if a solution is created by dissolving six grams in enough water to make one liter of solution and has an osmotic pressure of 0.75 atmospheres at that temperature? All right, so osmotic pressure given by pi has to equal I uh, times the molarity times gas constant times the temperature. And what are they asking me to solve for? They want to know the molecular weight. All right, well, I know molarity equals moles of solute per liters of solution. And I know that moles is grams over GFM. So if I plug that into my molarity and then plug that into this equation, I end up with the osmotic pressure has to equal I times um, 
grams over GFM for my moles divided by liters of solution times R times T. And if I want to rearrange the solve for gram formula mass, I do a little algebra. The gram formula mass is going to equal to I times grams times R T all over pi times liters of solution. I think. Yeah, that checks out. So now I can plug and chug. I know everything else. It's a non-electrolyte, so my I equals 1. The grams that I used was 6.00 grams. My R that I'm going to use, well, I like atmosphere, so 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin times my temperature in Kelvin. So that's going to be 298, right? 25 plus 273 gives me my 298 divided by the osmotic pressure. They said is 0 0.750 atmospheres times uh let's see liters of solution it says one liter of solution so times one and when i plug and chug and get that my final answer is going to be 196 grams per mole and if you even look at the units that you're left with it it works out look at that grams divided by moles lovely Eight, what is the vapor pressure of water at 25 Celsius in a solution prepared by dissolving 21 grams of urea, which is a non-volatile, non-electrolyte, molecular weight of 60 grams per mole, in 75 grams of water, and it says the vapor pressure of pure water at 25 C is 23.8 torr. So the equation that we're going to need for this is, hey, the pressure of whatever gas you're talking about needs to be equal to the mole fraction of that gas in your mixture times what it was at a pure uh, concentration. So we need to figure out the mole fraction of, in this case, water. Uh, the 23.8 torr, that is your P naught A, it's what it is when it's pure. So mole fraction, well, let's, let's figure this out. We want moles of H2O divided by moles of H2O plus the moles of urea. All right, so let's see. Moles of H2O is going to be 75 grams divided by that 18.02 grams per mole molecular weight for water. That'll give me my moles divided by, well, that whole thing, again, my moles of my water plus moles of urea. Well, I had 21 grams of that divided by the molecular weight of 60. And when I plug and chug, and get all that. You know what? I'm just going to substitute that in. All right. I'm not even going to deal with in between numbers. The uh, mole fraction is this that's 75 divided by 18.02, all divided by that 75 divided by 18.02 plus 21 divided by 60 times the P naught 23.8 torr. When I do that and I plug and chug, I get. 22.0 tor as my final answer there you go pressure went down vapor pressure went down from 23.8 to 22.0 number nine keep this party going what is the osmotic pressure of a solution prepared by dissolving 25 milligrams of aspirin in 0.25 liters of water at 25 degrees celsius um We're going to assume that this 20.25 liters of water is going to be the volume of the solution. All right, so we dissolve it. The 25 milligrams, no significant impact on the volume. It's still 0.250 liters. So if we want osmotic pressure, it's going to equal I times M times R times T. So the aspirin, covalent compound, non electrolyte, I equals 1. Molarity, we know, is moles per liter and moles is grams divided by the GFM. So I used 25 milligrams, which is the same as 0 0.0250 grams divided by the GFM of aspirin, which you can solve for. It's 180.17 grams per mole divided by, well, liters of solution, we're gonna say is 0 0.250 
liters uh, times by R, since we're you know dealing with atmospheres, 0 0.08206 liter times atmosphere over mole Kelvin times the temperature of 25C, which is 298 Kelvin. And when you plug and chug and get your final answer, you end up with like 0 0.0136 atmospheres. All right, and that's your final answer. Didn't get the finish class, no, whatever. Number 10, last but not least in the set, of the following, which cannot be a colloid. Uh, it's, it's, it's a homogeneous mixture. That's not a colloid. So we got homogeneous mixtures on the other end of the spectro. We have like the heterogeneous mixtures and colloids are kind of in the middle. If it's saying it's a, a homogeneous mixture, that is not a colloid. A foam, an aerosol, an emulsion, all those could be colloids. A homogeneous mixture cannot be. All right, I hope you found it helpful. I'll see you in class. Goodbye.